Never fly first class. What? What is he talking about? Here's why. Guys, today I'm flying my favorite airline, Qatar Airways. How long we travel? 25 hours of travel time, including connection. Our first flight's gonna be eight hours. Then we're gonna have a chance to get into the lounge and then another 15 hours to the US. As we settle in our seats, we're offered a glass of champagne. After this creative safety video, we're now on our way. So we've visited over 85 countries Hundreds of flights guys, most of these flights have been in economy class, also known as main cabin extra. So we've seen the interior of numerous planes. Our focus at first when we just started out was on retirement and home ownership. So we didn't have a whole lot of money to spend on expensive flights. And they didn't even have premium economy back then when we actually first started traveling. So now we're dating ourselves, right? Oh yeah. So emergency exit was like a great score because you guys see Marvin, look, his legs are so long, right? He's a so leg room. <laughs> So hey, you know, that was a major score. So now like we get super excited when we get the opportunity to fly business or first class. Oh yeah, I love it. The seat is very large. It's comfortable, very spacious. You have a lot of privacy because these doors can actually open and close right after takeoff. And we chose the middle because we can be beside each other. And they also convert into a double bed when it's time to go to sleep. So let me tell you a story. The first time we visited Australia, 14 hours LA to Sydney. Yes, it is as brutal as it sounds in economy. So Marvin, as you know, he's 6'6". So we had window and we had middle. So yes, the dreaded middle for 14 hours. So can you imagine? I said, you wake up, you go to work for eight hours, you come home, have dinner, and we're still on the airplane. Yes, it was as miserable as it sounded. For 14 hours, we had to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. I remember 10 hours in, I was like, oh my goodness, we still have four hours to go. I wish we had clips to show you, but we weren't filming videos yet. Let's look around a bit. So this is the control for the seat, so you can adjust it whatever angle you want, including life flat. You have a plethora of outlets, so you can really keep your electronics fully charged throughout the flight here are the amenities so you get a blanket pillow slippers pajamas now you don't find pajamas in a lot of business class flights but Qatar still offers them and it is wonderful one of the things we love about Qatar is the anytime dining and what this means is you can have your meal anytime throughout the flight so you're not restricted to the first couple of hours when you board so if you're tired and you want to take a nap, you can do so and then maybe eat later or if you want to eat right away, you can. But a pro tip is if you have a favorite dish or two and you want to have that, go ahead and reserve it with a flight attendant once you're bored so that they'll make sure that it's available for you when you're ready to eat. The entertainment is amazing and probably very similar to international first class, especially in Qatar, you have access to the latest movies, TV shows, games, meditation, music. So lots of entertainment throughout the flight. The monitor screens are huge as well. Back to the story. So when we got to Sydney, I was tired. Marvin was tired. We were sore. My legs were sore. My rear end was sore. Guys, the seat was tight. <laughs> yes, they were. Now all of that discomfort quickly disappeared when we saw how gorgeous Sydney was. When it was time to head back to the airport to return to the US, we weren't looking forward to that at all. No, dreading that flight. So, what we decided to do is to head back to the airport early. At the time, I had the highest airline status with Delta. Anne Marie had the second highest status, I believe, at that point. So I said, hey, I'm gonna go back and try to score an upgrade. So I remember he approached the agent and he's like, what seat do we have? Oh yeah. I remember the agent started typing away and I'm like, yeah, something's happening. But I'm, I wasn't sure. She didn't tell us what seat we had. And then she gave us a boarding pass. And I think we had like seat 14. And I knew the configuration then. It was a 777. And I knew instantly that it was gonna be a business class seat. 
as well and I was super excited and then Marie's like hey what seat is that what seat is that what seat is that and I'm like honey it's good it's good let's go and then we went off to the side and I explained to her yes we scored an upgrade so that was nice that was like a child waking up Christmas morning to open their presents. <laughs> oh yeah, it was great guys. A free upgrade. Let's just say it was a stark difference oh, yeah. on our return journey back to the US. Let's much just, different. Yeah, I mean the life, I see, the entertainment, food. food. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. We got lots of rest <laughs> as well. Flight to LA felt a whole lot shorter than the 14 hours. Guys. This is what changed your whole view on having a business class flight when flying long haul. Yes, yeah, so Marvin spends hours and hours combing the internet now when we are trying to go on a long haul flight. Guys, I gotta get a deal. I don't like paying full price, but I also don't like flying in main cabin as well when I'm going over long haul. And we define long haul as anything over eight hour flight. So if you're flying to, for example, from North America to Europe or going to the Middle East, that's up to 14 hours or going to Asia from North America. And typically the planes on a long haul flight, they normally have two aisles as well. So normally it's like um, nine in economy, maybe nine seats across. So you know when you're on a pretty large plane, 777 Dreamliner, A350, 767, planes like this. Let's just Take a minute to address the business class and first class situation. So is it international business or international first class? It could be domestic first class or even like Delta call their product Delta One. Oh yeah, so many choices guys and I see it's quite confusing. Yeah, very confusing for the nomenclature and then within the, the airline, it depends on the product that you're on. Oh yeah, all business class aren't created equal as well. So guys, these are some examples of business class. You got Qatar and ANA business class flights. You look at this, you think you're flying first class, but this is actually international business class. So, international first class, we flew on Qatar Airways on international first class. Much more luxurious seats are much bigger. We flew on Qatar Airways, they serve caviar, for example, and also $300 bottle of wine, so Krug champagne, and really, really the best types of champagne that's very typical. You know, really, really nice meal. Some of them even have showers on board, like what? I haven't experienced that, but I think you have. Yeah, I have once. <laughs> I flew on Emirates uh, with a shower. I'll try to uh, dig up an old picture, but I don't have any videos way before YouTube days. So can you imagine, guys, being at 30,000 feet, enjoying all that first class and international business class, but the cost, first class, it comes at a steep price, you know? Five grand, 5,000 to 15,000 US dollars per ticket. So better have that cheddar or a lot of points as well. A lot of times we fly, I try to take advantage and use airline points just to reduce our cost. Guys, international first class and business class, the products have really caught up to each other with the doors, with the type of seats and so forth. The big differentiator is the privacy, normally less seats. Most international first class airlines they only have maybe eight seats maximum so privacy and it's much more exclusive and the service would be a little bit better as well because normally they may have two or three staff that's dedicated to the eight passengers in international first class. So the experience really begins when you arrive at the airport from the check-in process to the lounge. Oh yeah, I really, really love a great lounge, guys. When you're flying, for example, Qatar, the Al Morjan Lounge for business class passenger in Doha, that lounge is exquisite. I mean, you have restaurants, you have meals to go, you have showers, you have sleeping areas, work areas, so many different types of seating options. Uh, comfort is really nice. Qatar has an even better lounge, the Al Safa first class lounge, 
wow, it blows the competition away. I remember, Han, we were there a few years ago when we flew first class on Qatar, and I was there recently, maybe, how long ago? Maybe yeah. two years ago as well. Now, are you starting to see why we're saying never fly first class? Nah, fly international business class instead, but once you do, you're gonna be hooked. Watch this video next on our a, &A experience. Get close again. So when he annoys me, I can like shut him off. 